All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, today we will have a wonderful webinar in the NeuroTools series um, on the Neuroscience Gateway. Uh, this is being presented by uh, Suba uh, Sibangam. I am going to butcher her name. She just told me how to do this, and I, I'm not going to do this well, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Suba. So what I will say is um, Suba has been, uh, is uh, co-PI of the Neuroscience Gateway, and she has been working at the Supercomputing Center for over 12 years now. Um, she has a tremendous amount of experience, uh, and this is really a resource for all of you to be able to access the supercomputing national infrastructure. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to mute myself and then unmute Suba, and I will be monitoring questions. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Subha Sivanyanam. And as Anita mentioned, I'll be talking about the Neuroscience Gateway, which is an NSF-funded project for running computational neuroscience simulations on high-performance computing resources. Um, so the core team members are at the San Diego Supercomputer Center. Amit Majumdar is the PI of this project. And we have Kenneth Yoshimoto, who's a senior personnel on this project. And we work uh, very closely with uh, neuroscientists uh, Ted Carnevale from Yale School of Medicine and Angus Silver and Puri Gleason from the University College of London. So I just want to briefly mention the motivation for starting NSG. Um, as uh, most of you already probably know this, um, there has been an increase in you know, simulation and modeling component in the neuroscience research, and that's uh, kind of evident from the increase in the modeling papers and uh, new journals for computational neuroscience. And even in the research propo proposals to NSF and NIH, modeling now plays a very big part. Uh, and there's been a growth in the uh, development of complex network models and parameter sweep and all that require computational resources that is beyond what can be offered by the laptop or desktop. And there's also been development of new computational neuroscience tools, which um, can be run on parallel resources, some through MPI, some on threaded. Um, and uh, parallelly, there has been advances in cyber infrastructure. Uh, now we have faster interconnects, um, the systems are faster, they're going now from um, tens to hundreds of teraflops to petaflops and soon to exascale computing. Um, we have uh, deep learning software now, data analytics software, Hadoop, and there's been uh, growth in the software for complex wor workflows. Um, so even though now with all these advances, what we see is that uh, there are some significant challenges, and especially HPC challenges, for computational neuroscience research. Um, most modeling projects, they start small, and many are forced to stay small, um, mainly because, you know, hey, Accessing HPC resources is not uh, very easy and it's not also openly available. Now, there are certain barriers of entry to the high performance computing environment. This thing being, you know, you need to write a proposal for the computing time. And in the US, um, there are many um, NSF funded supercomputing centers, and Exceed is like an umbrella organization for the supercomputing centers, which actually govern the how the time gets allo allocated on those resources. Um, so if you want to get time, even let's say at the San Diego Supercomputer Center's um, HPC cluster, you would have to write a proposal and that which gets peer reviewed and you may or may not get awarded the time that you ask. And once you get the time, you need to understand the uh, various architectures, the policies, how to install your software optimally on the HPC resource um, benchmark your code, understand the data transfers and managements and um, issues and storage issues. So based on this, we, um, in uh, 2013, NSG was started to kind of lower these barriers and the technical barriers of entry uh, for using the HPC resources. So when we started it, we wanted to provide um, an easy to use you know, portal to run any of the neuroscience related software and tools on the HPC resources. We want the neuroscientists to do their science and not worry about all this back-end plumbing, you know, of, uh, 
you know, how do you install the software, which, which resource do I run on? So we wanted to provide a free um, and easy to use portal. And in the sense, you know, democratize computational neuroscience research for everybody, including like students and researchers and um, faculty from underrepresented minority institutions. So as I mentioned, um, the goal was to provide something very easy and uh, simple to use. So the neuroscience um, gateway, um, we designed having a very use, easy to use user interface where we envision the user just they come and upload their input file or their model. And we will install all the backend, you know, the software and tools optimally on all the um, HPC resources and where the user just comes and selects the software tool and just sets whatever the parameter they want and just run it with a point and click. Um, and then of course there's, we provided the ability to easily you know, get the results. So user can easily download the results. Um, and, and once if they are a little bit you know, used to this environment and they are, um, they're a little bit of sophisticated you know, programmers or developers, then we also wanted to provide a programmatic access to those tools. So this is um, just a, a diagram of you know, how NSG is right now. So how a user can access NSG. So the NSG, um, you know, in the back end, we connect to various HPC resources and we have the you know, commonly used software tools installed there. A user can come in through a browser interface and I will show a, a demo shortly um, of how to use it through a browser. Um, so they can come in through the browser and use the NSG to run their re, um, models and simulations. Or if they are a little bit more sophisticated, they can do a programmatic access. You could have a, a Python code or a code where you can just um, connect programmatically through RESTful services to the NSG. Or um, the other neuroscience community projects, which has its own web application, can also connect to the NSG use, using the RESTful services. And I'll talk a little bit more in detail um, in the later slides. So in the back end, as I mentioned, um, NSG team, we write yearly allocation to the XC. We get time and we offer it um, you know, free for all the researchers who want to use it. So the, in, 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 currently we have, um, um, we have uh, access to three resources. One is at SDSC called a Comet, um, the Stampede 2 at uh, DAC, and uh, Bridges at Pittsburgh. Um, but we can always add as, you know, the user demand, if someone, if there's a lot of GPUs. So the various um, resources have, you know, some of them have GPUs, some of them have KNL, some of them Xeon processes. We can um, get access to those resources as, you know, the user requirements and demand. And some of these resources also offer, like, you know, if you, there's a parameter sweep studies, we can, we can bundle a lot of uh, single core simulations and run it as a single one job in parallel and that it, such abilities are possible on the backend resources and we also support custom workflows for example there was a tbb pipeline developed by petra Ritter's group we support that so we can also do um, such custom support workflows these are some of the software tools um, that we have installed so when we first started nsg we were just focusing on spiking neuron you know whatever software supports spiking neural tools like Neuron um, or Genesis. And then we had like Moose and Nest and Pine. But now um, the users are kind of driving, you know, what software we need to install and make available. Um, now we see more and more requests for data processing and analysis tools. There have been requests for deep learning software. So we provide like TensorFlow, Kira's, Theano's. We have um, custom design software like, you know, Carlsim um, and uh, TBB Pipeline. We have Bluepi Op from the HPP community. We have, we have installed that. Um, so, and then, the, you know, the common Python modules and Python scripts are also available. And so our, our software stack, you know, it greatly is driven by the, you know, the neuroscience community needs. And we see that, you know, the, uh, there's been more and more requests now for you know data processing and deep learning kind of software imaging tools um, and we also realized that when the users when the when there are developers of the software tool they do need an environment so we also work with them to you know to optimally test and install it and make it available so we are sort of now moving towards you know tool dissemination also for uh, neuroscience um, software so let me quickly show a demo of how 
um, you know, a user can use Neuroscience Gateway Portal to submit jobs <laughs> for the backend HPC resources. Um, as I mentioned, this should be fairly, you know, simple and straightforward just for a user, you know, when they come in, they upload the model, they point click, and they should be able to get the results. So let me show you um, a quick demo. So this um, is our website, um, the nsgportal.org. And just a quick mention. So here, you know, usually we have our user guides and tutorials, and you know, you can always reach us if you have any questions. So let me go ahead. Um, you can take some time to explore the site, and let me just go to the portal to show a quick demo. So I'm already logged in. If I'm not logged in, let me just show you quickly that um, you can just fill out a simple form here. So the the form is very straightforward, like, you know, just your username, first, um, first and last name, you just put your email address and a short research description. And once you submit it, um, we will, you know, just verify that you are who you say you are and then give you an account, usually within 24 hours. So once you got that, you can always log in and start running your code and applications. So I'm just going to log in now. So I already have um, a folder created, but it's very simple. You just create a new folder and you will have a folder. Um, there, there, there will always be two subfolders, one for the data and one for the task. A task is, is all your, where your job information, how do you want to run your code, you know, how, with how many process. So all that information will go into under the task folder. So in the data is where you upload your model. So let me, uh, quickly upload a model that I downloaded from uh, model DB. It's a, it's a Jones model. Let me, um, Okay, so let me quickly, um, you know, I already have that uh, model somewhere here, right here. So let me just move it to this new folder so I can show you this functionality of moving model data between um, folders as well. So um, I'm just going to move that Jones model that I downloaded to here. So now you can see that the data, there's a one there and the Jones model that I um, previously you know, downloaded, I've just moved it to this subfolder. And um, I'm going to create a new task. A task is where you would choose what kind of um, software or what model, you know, what application you want to run. And you can um, choose also the um, parameters associated with submitting a job or executing that particular job on a high performance computing resource such as, you know, how many cores you want to run on, how long do you think a job will run. So for now, let me um, select the data. And for this particular example, I'm going to use Neuron um, software which is installed on Comet, and I want to run Neuron 7.4. And um, you can set the parameters, like I mentioned, so you want to say, okay, well, I want to run for 30 minutes. And I know that the main input file name for this particular job is batch.hook. And I want to run it on a single node, and I want to run it on eight cores. Um, you, if you have other things, like you have command line options that you need to provide, you can provide it here. Um, so once you do that, you would just save the parameters, give it a name. Um, you know, any name is fine, it's just a description, and you want to save and run the task. And that's about it. So now what is happening in the back end is, um, your, the model that you uploaded, your input file, it's being transferred to the Comet supercomputer. Um, you, the, all the, the, um, the job script is being constructed on the fly. 
and the job will get submitted on the Comet um, HPC resource. So right now you can see the staging. So right now it is at the staging, the st input staging. So input files are now being transferred. Soon it'll go into the submission mode and then it'll give you a job ID. At this point, you can log off and you know go. When the job is completed, you'll get an email notification saying the job is completed. And so when you come back, you'd be able to um, you know, download your results. So um, I just want to show you something that's completed so that you know for the for this talk, I can just show you how. For example, this, this is a similar job that I ran, and you can see that the output is completed and you can just download it. Um, so other things that I want to mention is the, all the software that we install on the backend is listed over here. So you can see that you know, some, some of the things that I mentioned in the earlier slide is also here that you have FreeSurfer, uh, BluePyOp, Octave, uh, Genesis, Client. So you can go over the list. And if it's not here, some things are not listed here, but we still make it available. Mostly the Python modules or um, a MATLAB toolbox that has been developed. So we have other um, installed uh, pieces too. And if you are interested in um, you know, making your, the software tool that you're developing available through us, you can always work with us. We work with a lot of developers and we disseminate the tools to NSG. Um, and one more thing I want to show is that um, there is the ability to clone. What the cloning does is say, you know, you want to just change some of the command line parameters, but you want to run. Sorry, I have a question um, from Mona. Um, would you be able to uh, address how does a youth know um, how many cores and how long to run it for, et cetera? So before you run on a HPC resource, we, you know, we, uh, we assume that you know, you've run this um, on your laptop or at a you know, campus resource. Um, so usually you run on a single core, see how it performs, then you scale up a little bit, right, on two cores, um, and, and then see how your, your code scales up before you decide, you know, um, so before you decide on what's your optimal number of cores that you want to run on. And this is true for any, you know, code that runs on a HPC resource. And regarding the wall time, um, so again, it's the same thing. You want to know if your code really does scale well, the time does have to go down. So, and we always tell our users to overestimate the time that you think your code will run. The reason being, um, in the back end, there's a scheduler, right, on the HPC resources which schedules a job. It only looks at the wall time, and once the wall time has passed, it will kill the job. So, um, once you, if you overestimate the time, the, the advantage is that, you know, you will, your job will run, but you will only be charged, or in the sense, you, your, the number of hours that you use on that computer resource will only be the time that you actually use it. So it's, it's always good to overestimate and uh, not. Okay, so another question, uh, can I use a bash shell script to perform a batch simulations, examples with parameter exploration instead of a hawk? Is a, uh, um, yeah, yes, you can, because, uh, but the thing is we, right now we don't give you a direct login. It has to be only through the portal. Um, if your code is a Python code, yes, you can execute it, but direct shell scripts, we don't allow you to run. Uh, but if you can, you know, put it into a Python code or if you can make it into a, a C code, we can make it work. Okay, and now there's uh, another one. In your example, um, you do uh, you did show that how the uh, batch hawk made use of parallelization. NPI. Yes, it was a parallel code. Um, it's in the model DB. I just used a CAN model that was available through the model DB. Um, the code is by Stephanie Jones from Brown University. It's a Jones et al. It does a thalamic cortical study. Um, so you can just look it up, and if you need more information about the model, I can give you the accession number. Any further questions? Uh, I think they, we just got to thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, the cloning is mainly used for you know um, parameter sweep studies, or if you want to just look at the scaling performance, and this gives you because what the clone does is it copies the exact you know everything that you just entered in, it just clones it. 
Um, and then everything that you set is already there. For example, remember we set it as batch.hook, it's right here. Now you can increase this to 16 cores if you want. And again, one more thing, um, uh, one thing that I wanna mention is, since we provide access to various HPC resources, each of the resources will have different settings, meaning um, right now we're running on Comet. So when I click on this, it will tell me that um, on, on Comet, there is, you know, the maximum number of nodes for this job is just 72 nodes. And then um, each node on Comet has 24 cores. And this will change with the resource. So if you're running on Comet, do not expect the same settings to be available for other um, HPC resources. And uh, we are just providing what is being set by the backend. This is not something that, you know, we, we might have a little bit of control, but we are not, everything is set by the backend HPC system administrators, and we just follow their policy for allocating jobs. So, um, um, so this is just the, I wanted to just show you quickly. And our task, we can um, see what's going on. So right now it's submitted to comment, like um, we, at the previous uh, step when I showed it was in the input staging. Now it's, it has been submitted and you can see it's a success in it and the comment. So when it's done, I will get an email saying the job is completed. Um, you can always log in and um, get this um, information too. Any questions I can take for about the demo? Well, I think we're good so far. Okay. So the portal is one way of accessing NSG, um, but now if you are a software developer, or like I said, if you have your own um, a community project um, and you want to still use NSG as a part of it, um, there is a way we provide is through the programmatic access and we use RESTful services for that. And there are two ways you can access, the pro uh, you know, access NSG through the programmatic access. One, what we call the umbrella accounts. Now the umbrella is like a special case and it's mostly used by community gateway projects like you know, the OSB or the HBP Collab, which itself is a web application that, that has a lot of users. And they, they will submit jobs on behalf of their, you know, their multiple registered users to NSG. Um, so the advantage being their, their users don't need to have individual account with us. We will just trust the resource and we will, so you know, we will do the handshake and they uh, will submit the jobs directly to NSG. The other way, which is the more common choice, is if you want to use this RESTful API from your application immediately, you can use it through the direct access. So the examples would be like you are having a, your own custom pipeline, you're building you know, a series of steps out of which one particular part of your code wants to use NSG and you're running it on your own laptop. You can uh, sub programmatically submit uh, from you know your laptop to NSG and get the results back. Or let's say you're developing a software and your software, which is a downloadable software for um, a wider user community, and you want to incorporate this RESTful access as a part of the software, you can do that. Um, we, have a, uh, we have a postdoc who's developing SimTracker for tracking uh, the neuron simulations, and she's, she wants to, she's incorporating um, NSGR as a part of the um, software. So this is just an example of how you would use the same Jones model. If you want to use it programmatically from your laptop, you, you could use curl. We have uh, Python Java APIs that you can use to submit it. All the functions that you just saw through the portal, it's available through the RESTful services. You can list your submitted jobs. You can list the results. You can download results. You can list your working directory. You can um, download and you can cancel a job. You can set the number of nodes, the number of cores, the number, you know, the wall clock time that you did um, on the portal. Everything can be done. Um, programmatically too. Um, so we, we, the web page that I showed you has a documentation on how to use programmatic access if you are at that level or if you want to use the portal you can always come in and um, use the portal. So I just want to mention a few use cases of how NSG is being used right now. So the first example would be from um, Dr. Litton's lab at uh, SUNY Downstate. Um, so they use NSG various ways. They use it for their own research. But what I'm highlighting here is the software tool developed in the lab. It's called NetPine. The, so it's a Python package um, to facilitate um, parallel simulation of biological neuronal networks in neuron for experimentalists. And uh, the developer, uh, you know, has developed the software and it's now being made available on NSG and it's being used by others. 
Um, so this is an example of how we, uh, you know, we work with the uh, developers and we make a software to available for, um, you know, tool dissemination. Um, so this NetPine is actually being used by Open Source Brain. So they connect and they use um, the Open Source Brain users use NetPine as a part of their um, um, work and research. See, see the um, the other example that we have is integration of um, Open Source Brain with NSG using RESTful services. Now, Open Source Brain is um, it's an open source model development repositories for computational neuroscience. And um, they have, you know, the, the site has like, you can do visualization of models in 3D. Um, they have, they have a, a lots of spiking neuronal network models in NeuroML and um, Pine. And uh, as uh, with the NSG, what they do is they um, are doing the first thing that I mentioned in the programmatic access. They are like what we call the umbrella account meaning there is a web application, they have their own user base. So once the user logs in, this is exactly a screenshot of open source brain. As you can see here, they can choose neuron on NSG, choose to run it on NSG or NetPine on NSG. So they choose that and they run it and the jobs get run on NSG and the results go back. Now, um, none of their users need to get an account with us directly. So they, um, the developer of OSB maintains it. And this has been developed at the uh, Dr. Silva's lab at UCL. Um, another example that I want to show is the EEG lab, which is a very popular um, MATLAB toolbox for processing continuous and event-related um, EEG MEG data. And they um, also incorporate um, independent component analysis. It's a very popular electrophysiological uh, um, processing toolbox. Um, they have a, a big user base. They have a lot of citations and um, it's a very popular box and um, it's being developed by uh, Dr. McKeek's group here at UCSD. Um, and we are working with them to incorporate, um, you know, uh, first we have installed EEG lab and on NSG. Now we will be working with them to incorporate um, you know, job submission programmatically when they when someone downloads the tool or when you know just through the portal itself. So as I mentioned, when um, we started NSG, we just wanted to provide a simple portal where user comes, they log in, and they use you know the uh, few spiking software that was installed. But now we're noticing just you know the just the users are actually driving um, you know what. NSG should provide, and we are getting, uh, we are noticing that there are more and more um, tool developers who want to work with us, and we are becoming a tool dissemination place. Um, so one example I mentioned was the EEG lab. We are also working with the human neocortical neurosolver from uh, the Brown University, Stephanie Jones. Um, we are also working with the Blue Pi app from HBP Collab. So if you have an account there, you can go to the Blue Pi app part. Um, and submit jobs from there when they submit the jobs to NSG and get the results back in the HBP collab. Um, and that's been uh, run the PI uh, Miglior. Um, then we have, um, like what I said, software. The, the, these are the software tools that have been developed as part of the lab and we just disseminated. Carl Sim is a GPU accelerated SNN simulator um, that's when we use Irvine and LSNM, which is like a large scale neural simulator, which is developed from um, NIH, a uh, person who works there, um, Antonio Uloa. Um, and we do um, a lot of um, uh, training courses. We have um, the annual, you know, we go to the SFN, we have a satellite workshop, and we have a CNS, you know, usually a workshop there and a poster. Uh, we do webinars, and usually our workshops, we have about 25 to 30 attendees. We have uh, computational neuroscientists, students um, attending it. Uh, we um, uh, usually participate in the Neuron Summer course, and um, um, we work with the, uh, Dr. Nair in the University of Missouri. He has an NIH-funded uh, neuroscience training course, and NSG, it, it, you know, we always have a demo there, and we um, help their, their students run their code using NSG. Uh, we are also starting to work with them to incorporate NSG as part of the training modules and for the lesson learning um, in the University of Missouri uh, graduate course. Um, so we, we're noticing that more and more now we, the NSG users want a, a, a collaborative environment and um, they want for application development and testing, they would like to share. So we are seeing, you know, so when we started, we just wanted to have like, you know, run on HPC, but now we are seeing it evolve into 
you know, we are actually not, you know, we're just taking the users important and we are, it's slowly evolving by itself. Um, so we do surveys and we have did a recent survey to see, you know, where they want, where the users want to go and we've noticed that sharing and collab. Yes, Anita. Um, so I have a question about uh, next gen sequencing. Are you thinking about uh, putting in any of those pipelines? If, if appropriate, you know, and, and as I said, ours is neuroscience related and definitely next gen sequencing related to neuroscience. Yes, of course. I mean, if you have, um, if anybody's interested, you always contact us. But just to show, you know, how we've been growing this, said we started in um, 2013 and now we have around, you know, 560 users registered, but, you know, actively in a, in a month, we would have like between um, uh, 50 to 80 users. Um, and as you can see on the right hand side chart, that's the time that we get and um, from and which has and you can see how much has been used too. Um, so these are just the core hours that energy team we as you know, we write Amit writes a proposal to exceed and uh, we get the time. But what we want to show is that, you know, the usage is also driven by the user base, which is also growing. So some points to remember. Any researcher, student from anywhere can use NSG for free. Um, you, we, we, when you start an account with us, we give you a certain number of hours based on your research. We understand that um, you know, the, the research and the neuroscience community is very diverse and your computational needs are also very diverse. So you know, we, we work with you, we give you time according to you know, your research and you know, to, to the point where you get a publication. Um, then let's say you want to have, you know, we get 10, like the last allocation, we got 10 million hours, which we distributed across right, to all our users. But if you want your, an individual 10 million, we can, you know, give you that. So what we will do is we will work with you to write your exceed allocation proposal. Um, once you've grown, you know, that, that, uh, once you've grown beyond what we can offer, and then you can still use NSG. We would put, you would put in your allocation, um, um account, and then you, you can still use NSG. Um, just for, um, you know, if you have any new software or pipelines to be provided, like I mentioned, we do that. Um, all our online documentation support is available through our website, and you can always email us at nsghelp at sdsc.edu. So we just, uh, I, I mentioned this on the website, I mean, I pointed this out on the website, but this is the link to get an account. It just, the, when you get an account, you automatically get an account to use both the portal and the RESTful services. Um, it's, we just do a brief verification, as I mentioned, um, and you, we will add you to our email list, but that's like, just to mention if, oh, well, you know, a comment resource is going to be down, it's, it's a very infrequent news posting there, or if there is a seminar, we will post that and, but not, not, you wouldn't get any frequent emails from that list. So, um, as a summary, we provide programmatic and portal access to neuroscience tools and applications on HVC. We work with developers for neuroscience related software dissemination. We encourage collaboration with researchers from around the world. Currently, we are collaborating with UK, um, Germany, Japan, uh, we definitely, India, uh, we definitely would like to expand that. Um, we do summer projects here. We uh, take high school kids and um, undergraduate students for summer projects at um, NSG. Um, we do an annual um, workshop at the SFN, and this year uh, the satellite workshop is on November 11th. If you are interested in attending, uh, you can get more information from uh, the workshop at HTML. It's a, a short registration page you can register to attend. Um, and we also present at the Neuron Summer Course every year. And you know, if you use NSG, we you know kindly request you to cite us so that lets us know how many people are using it you know, and in your publication. Um, and if you have any presentation publication that we can include in our reports to NSF, please um, do let us know. Um, you can just send an email to nsghelp at um, sdsc.edu. So um, be happy to take any questions. Uh, okay, so um, now I've unmuted my, uh, myself here and there are several questions. Um, First of all, thank you so much for doing a wonderful job. Here thank is, <laughs> so here are the next couple of questions. So first and foremost, um, okay, so that one was the next gen sequencing and I think we've gotten that one addressed. Okay, so the next one really has to do with uh, the MATLAB um, 
uh, uh, license, an MDCS license? Uh, is it an MD, uh, MDCS license or is it just a standard license? And can you talk to my computer? Because <laughs> I, I muted you actually. I don't want both um, to be on at the same time. So can you talk to my computer? <laughs> I'm not sure how it is. Oh, just come over here. I think we'll, we'll just, uh, so here's the question about the MDCS license. So at uh, SDSC, um, actually we, and or actually UCSD, we, or the license that we have for MATLAB can be used by any academic users. Um, so as long as it's an academic user for research, you can use it. Um, we do have MDCS license, but, um, but that's not being, I mean, at, at the center. But we have not yet included that for the NSG because uh, maybe we haven't had any requests for that. Um, so right now, the users just use the MATLAB for running their codes and it's part of the same uh, pipelines. Okay, so the next question, uh, and let's see, uh, I think that, that handles that. Okay, so the next question is again from Mike, and this one uh, was just not really a question because it just uh, pointed the users to um, the particular model that, um, that you use, Suba. So um, if anyone would like that model, it's right there. And then uh, he's just saying, you know, thanks for your effort for the uh, community spirit supporting neuroscience. Um, can you please post somewhere a PDF copy of the presentation to our future uh, reference? Yes, absolutely. So uh, for myself, I will absolutely post this. Um, this uh, recording is going to stop very soon. And um, then what I will do is once this is processed, then this will go up on YouTube on the um, Neuroscience Information Framework channel. Uh, but we can uh, go ahead and, and send this back out to the neuron group or, or whoever wants to know about this. Um, more than happy to do that. And um, Suba, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on you a little bit now. Um, so you say please cite us uh, by this this paper, and which is a great paper. I think that's fantastic. But can you talk about also citing us by your RID? Okay. <laughs> Because we have, have some questions. Lovely, yeah, Anita's going to ask you a question. It's going to have to be about how I'll have to talk to you more about how we can you know, put that information out. And definitely, yeah. I know we have an RRID. You could, yes, you do. Yeah. Yes, you do. You could just change that statement to you know, add the RRID right there. Okay. Really nice. All right. We yeah. can do that too. Okay, good. <laughs> we can put that information on our webpage. Okay, good. So for, for anybody else who wants to speak, I'm going to ask you that question. So I'll let you know. A fair warning at this point. <laughs> um, okay, so um, are there any other questions um, about the nitty gritty, the the uh, goals of um, of any of this? I'm happy to unmute anyone that would like to be unmuted now. Um, just please raise your hand, and we'll we'll take any questions. Um, I think we've addressed, you know, uh, all of the tool related questions. Um, Bash hawk questions. Um, how do we know how long to run? Which I think you know can be summarized with overestimate, please, <laughs> so that your job doesn't get killed. Um, and I think other than parallelization uh, and new tools, I think the answer just is please contact Suba. She will be more than happy to answer all of your deep questions about all uh, HPC resources. Okay, uh, anyone else for any questions? I don't see anything. So, oh, go ahead. Uh, was that Mona? Did you need to? I just unmuted myself to thank Suva, but oh. I was going to wait until the end. Perfect. This is it. Uh, so yes, I, I think I would like to second that thanking of Suba. I think she did a fantastic job letting us know about this great resource. So uh, please go out there, get an account, and use it. Um, it is it is there for you. It's it's provided by um, you know the NSF, so uh, that all neuroscientists have access to these great compute resources. Okay, thank you very much. And Suba is uh, thanking all of you. Yeah, thank you as so well. much for joining us. And please, um, if you have any questions, always email us. Thank you. <laughs>